you will sell a lot of these and I guarantee you that. Right, folks, so in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to become a product research machine for Amazon FBA. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by doing some live product research and explaining my thought process out loud. So I'm using Helium 10 today. If you wanna pause this and look at the filters, you can do, but if you don't, you can skip ahead to the bits where I'm actually looking at the products. But basically what I'm looking for is that I want everything to have a good demand. Everything that appears here I want it to have a healthy demand so what I'm on is the keywords tab so I put in a minimum search volume of 5,000 take a look at all the other filters but basically I want something with good demand and I want something that's got review rating of 4.5 or less because I want to see areas of improvement so i'm going to dive in and i'm just going to look at products and then i'm going to speak out loud and hopefully what you're going to do is you're going to learn from the way that i think when i look at stuff and it's going to help you when you're doing your product research so if you don't know me um, i'm one half of the honest entrepreneurs in this channel we're basically just bringing you insights into um into the world of amazon fba we're growing our own seven figure brand so if you're into amazon fba give us a like give us a subscribe all of that stuff so the first thing that i want to look at is this diamond tester so the reason that i saw it was because i saw it's got thirty one thousand um searches so helium 10 it allows you to you know look at the search history and the search volume of keywords so you can see this kind of didn't really have that many searches before covid but since then it's kind of jumped up weirdly you see this a lot on products but 26,000 searches a month is pretty healthy. So everything that I do and everything that I look at when I'm doing product research, there's a few key things that I'm looking at and a few key questions that I'm asking. Number one is their demand. And the answer to that is yes. So you can see here that these this one's doing 160 a day, 75 a day, 33 a day. It looks like the demand is pretty healthy across the board. And we know that 25,000 people a month are searching for this. So the second question is, if I come into this niche, if I try and source one of these, can I start stand out and the first thing that I see that I really like is everything looks the same now the reason I like that is because if everything looks the same then you can come in with something completely different and you can really stand out so you can imagine if you came in here with one that's a completely different shape a different size and a different color you would immediately stand out against these other competitors so you want to be finding niches where everything looks the same everything looks dull and boring because what that means is if you come in with something new and sexy that stands out you're going to get more clicks than these other people so that's the first thing is i'm thinking can i stand out the second thing is how is the actual product performing so look at the top sellers how is it performing are people happy with it and then can we find something in here that we can improve? Now, what you gotta remember with products like this is because it's an electrical product, because it's got probably like quite a specific sort of function inside of it, what it means is that unless you spend some money customizing this, you're probably just gonna have to buy it from Alibaba. So that's not really a great thing because then anybody can just copy you. But if you do have a decent budget, you can actually try and customize stuff like this. So what I'd imagine if you look at all the negative reviews in here, you're probably gonna see that this stuff basically you know it probably doesn't really work very well you know tested gemstones as diamonds so what you've got to do then if you've got to think all right maybe i do want to come into this maybe i want to create a brand around testing diamonds maybe i want to create a brand for people that test diamonds people that own jewelry so you have to dive in and you have to really understand who the avatar is who the person is that's buying these products um, but that's where I would start. I would try and understand who's buying them and then I would go away and I would research, research. I would research what currently exists. You've got ones like this. If you go on Alibaba, you're gonna see thousands of these for sale because they're hoping that people just come and buy them and try and stick their logo on them. But you can see like it's just pretty crap. So Diamond Selector 2, the branding isn't great, which is a great sign. Like the listing's pretty average. It just looks pretty pretty crap right so what would excite me about this niche is i would be thinking if i can source something if i can customize this product um a little bit i know i can create a beautiful looking brand then i'm definitely going to be able to stand out in this niche so this is a great example for me of something that ticks a few boxes it ticks the demand box it ticks the boring branding box because everyone is boring and then it also ticks the functionality box where there's room for you to improve something in this niche now the next thing is, can I actually improve it? Because that's the key question. You can't always improve these things. Sometimes, you know, unless you've got a huge, huge budget to go into research and development, how are you actually gonna improve this? But there might be a way that you can do that 
And if you do come into something like this and you bring a better quality product with an amazing looking brand, you will sell a lot of these and I guarantee you that. It's not easy, it's not easy to do that. It's not easy to customize these types of products. But if you do go to that length and you come in here with a brand that looks good, you're gonna really stand out because everything just looks the same. Just It's so boring, it makes me wanna fall asleep, it's gray. When I think of diamonds, I think of sexy and nothing in here screams sexy to me. So come in with a sexy brand, saw, some, saw something really useful that works properly. That's the kind of key to this puzzle. I'm gonna go back to black box because I don't wanna spend too much time on individual products. I wanna keep this flowing. I wanna keep the entertainment going, the product research <laughs> entertainment. Um, I really enjoyed doing these. So let me know in the comments below if you like them and if there's anything specific that you want me to um, take a look at. What you'll see a lot of the times with stuff like this, right? This is a very, very functional product. It's a product where, think about when you're looking for something like this. I don't wanna be sexist, but if you move into a new house, maybe your partner um, is gonna be nagging you that we, oh, we need some storage, we need this, we need that. You're gonna come on Amazon and what you're gonna be thinking is, I don't wanna spend a fortune, but I don't want something really cheap. So what ends up happening is you go for the thing that's in the middle of the pack. Now the problem with products like this is like, when people are not really looking for something premium, you end up competing on price. And it's difficult to compete on price because the Chinese sellers can always beat you. Always, always, always. But you look at something like this, it's a good price point. It's absolutely huge. It's by Song Mics, which I know are a huge, huge Chinese brand. Going to be difficult to compete against. But this sort of stuff, it just doesn't really excite me. Um, you know, the listing's not too bad. But again, it's just very, very functional. But you can go through the same steps with this as you can with everything else. You need to check there's a healthy demand. And then you need to think, how can I stand out? Brainstorming ways to stand out, it goes back to customer research and customer understanding. Understanding who is buying these portable wardrobes, what are they looking for, and how did the ones that currently exist, how do they meet those needs? Because if there's a gap in this market, if it's somebody wants something more aesthetic or they want something with more functionality, the only way you're gonna understand that is by doing customer research. So I'm gonna go back, I'm not gonna to spend too, too long. This video is probably gonna be more about actual concepts and fundamentals. It might be different than other product research videos you see because most of the videos, what they do is they do this thing where it's like finding a $50,000 product opportunity in five minutes and they're talking nonsense. They're talking absolute nonsense and it's usually these gurus that don't even know what they're doing, they don't sell on Amazon. The, the core fundamentals of product research are the same for everything there's no magic bullet it's about understanding fundamentally how buyer psychology works and how niches and markets function and then it's and then it's bringing something in that is going to help you help you stand out basically it's about understanding how people think this is another good example immediately we see 10,000 reviews um, i'm not obsessed with reviews um, I do think you can launch into markets where people have a lot of reviews. You just have to be aware that it's more competitive. And the more competitive a market is, the more you have to have a super customized individual product and an incredible brand. Because if you have a super beautiful customized product that offers more value and you have a beautiful brand, you can compete in competitive markets. But if you don't, you're going to really struggle. Now, what people might be attracted to is you see stuff like this, right? So this has got 45 reviews and it's doing 78 a day. So what we need to see is that how, what was it? So a wedge pillow is 100,000 searches a month. This is the sort of product that, I mean, I don't know why it went nuts here. Sometimes you see stuff on TikTok and then, it, and then it makes people look on Amazon. So that might have happened here. But let's take a look at this one. So it's pretty new. Only got 45 reviews. Let's have a look at the listing. The listing is... It's it's not too bad. I, it's very simple, which I like, um, but it's the branding just looks kind of cheap and crap. What you've got to remember with all of these products, you're never going to be able to compete on price. Never, ever be able to compete on price because 99% of the people, it's not 99% of the people, the majority of the sellers on Amazon are Chinese. And what they can do is they can get better prices. So when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, if I want to create something premium here, what would I need to do in order to do that? Because if this is $34.99, the only way we would be able to sell the same product is if we sold it for probably $42.99. So then you have to think, well, why would anybody pay an extra like $8 
um, for my product. So what I would be thinking is again, looking at the reviews, the reviews, um, honestly, probably these reviews, a lot of them are probably gonna be fake if it's a new product and it's a Chinese seller. But again, you go through the same steps, it's got good demand. You just need to see if there's any way that you can improve this product or stand out to this avatar. So I mean, it's actually quite a cool product, isn't it? You can just put it in bed you can use it like this or you can use it on the sofa that would probably be really comfortable so you need to think of like who is buying it so everything that you look at try and understand who is buying it understand what they really want look at what currently exists and then see how you can come in and appeal to those people more than what's currently being offered. So a lot of the time, what I will try and do is think of an aesthetic angle. Is this a product that people would appreciate a different aesthetic angle? I'm not really sure if it is. I think it's a very it's a very functional product, but perhaps it is. Perhaps you could do some research and see, do people want something? Do they want one of these wedge um, cushions or, or uh, pillows, whatever, that is better aesthetically. You know, the, the main thing about this is that it's comfortable and it serves its purpose, its functionality. So you don't want to get tied up in making it look amazing and then you forget about improving the functionality. But again, you need to go through all of the main sellers. You need to look at their weak points, their positives. As I said before, I really like niches where everything looks the same and they're really boring. You know, you're probably going to find in here a couple of big players but the thing about these types of niches is the demand is absolutely massive. Like you can see even down here, some of these, they're doing 70 a day. You've got ones like this that are only doing three a day. You can always learn from people that have launched and then not done very well. So you've got to look at like, why didn't they do very well? I'm not hugely in love with this because I think it's very, very um, competitive in the sense that there's going to be a lot of big players that have been around for a while. And also when the demand is so huge, if you've only got like a reasonable budget as a new seller, you're going to find it difficult to compete with stuff like this. So again, it's not something that I'm super excited about, but I'm going to move on. Again, I'm going to quickly go through. So let me know in the comments below if you like this style of video. Let me know if there's any ways that I can improve it. Um, so Halloween skeleton, not going to not gonna look at that because you don't want anything seasonal. Tattoo machine kit. You know what? I'm going to look at this. And again, you've got to think about brands. You've got to think about avatars, who is buying this stuff. The the beauty of stuff like this is people who are buying this are very passionate about what they do. So that, that gives you an opportunity to create a brand because whenever people are passionate about things, then it makes them it makes it makes them the perfect type of people to bring a brand to because they're gonna buy multiple products, they buy into your brand, you get brand loyalty. Um, so let's have a look at this top one. So this is doing like 50 a day, um, 78 a day. Again, a consideration with a product like this is this is going to be difficult to customize. So whenever you're looking at products, you need to be thinking how easy is it to how easy and how economic is it to cheat to customize whatever this product is because this is a very complex product. You might be able to, you know, you might be able to, you know, put put a different color or a different logo or whatever. But often that's not enough nowadays. So what you need to be thinking about is if I do customize this, how could I actually do that? The overall listing is pretty crap. Um, again, I like when everything looks the same. Like why do they choose? Why do they all choose to do the exact same thing? Like if you're gonna launch one of these, make sure your hero image looks different than everyone else's because if it doesn't, you're just gonna blend in. Like which one of these do I click? They all look exactly the same. Um, so let's have a look at the, th this is the one that I'm on, right? So I'm going to look at this one, this Dragonhawk one. What I'm doing as I'm looking at a niche is I'm trying to get a feel for how good the competition is. So if, if I look at it and I think, wow, these listings are incredible, um, I'm not super happy about it. But if I look and I think they look a bit crap, like this one for me, it's probably average. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. Um, I don't know whether Dragonhawk is like an existing brand that exists off Amazon. I assume it's probably not because it doesn't look that professional. It just looks like something from Alibaba with a logo on. But what I would do if I'm looking at this, I would think about, you know, is it is this going to be professional tattoo artist? Like does a proper professional tattoo artist come to Amazon to buy their tattoo guns? Or is this people that are doing it like in their back garden not the back guy well some people it, you know pe you hear about people doing it in their kitchens and stuff but look at this so i, I decided to get a tattoo um kit a week ago it's been eight years since i did lamet last tattoo so th the people that are buying these guns on amazon they're they're not the top professionals right these are like amateur um tattoo gun 
people. And these are people that are doing them in the kitchen, probably for their friends. So when you start to realize that, you start to think, okay, then how can I appeal to those people more than what currently exists? You know, is there a way that I can create a brand that's really gonna stand out to these like amateur tattoo people? And then also what you can do is you can start to think, you know, what else would those people be looking for? So when you click on this, so I mean, this straight away tells you it's not a huge brand because you click on their storefront and they don't have a storefront, they just have um, a ton of these tattoo guns. But what's really great about what they've done is they've launched multiple of these. So they've got one, two, three, four, um, and they're doing 50 a day, 26 a day. Oh my God, they're absolutely cleaning it up, man. 100K, 25K. So whoever this company is, they're absolutely cleaning it up from these um, tattoo guns, right? And look at the price point. The price point is really good. So the price point is good. And if you think about the size of these guns as well, they're probably gonna pack pretty small. So the shipping's not gonna be expensive. So again, this is probably a product that's gonna be good for you if you have a big budget. If you have a small budget, type, these types of products are gonna be difficult. Um, but what I wanna look at is, I wanna kinda see, are they a Chinese seller? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here. Um, da -da -da. Okay, so they're not, they're US, but uh, okay, so they're, they are, um, they're based in the US, they've got a US company, but they are a Chinese brand. But what I like about this is this brand is absolutely killing it. If we go back and we like, we it, it's, it's, it was like $300,000 a month, right? And they, these probably um, absolutely crush it at Christmas as well. People probably buy these for, you know, people over Christmas. So what I like about this is it's a passion brand, uh, a passion niche, because people, People that I'm, um, I don't know why my, my sales are all blanked out, but let's have a look at the BSR and stuff. But they were doing a lot of money. This listing is a little bit better than the previous one. I like the I like the photos, crap branding, like look, just what is this, mass tattoo? Oh, is this, this is a different, ah, so maybe Dragonhawk is not actually, maybe they're selling wholesale or something like that. Well, this one actually said Dragonhawk Pro. Anyway, the point is, is think about the, think about the, the person buying this. It's an amateur tattoo gunner, whatever you want, artist gunner. It's an amateur tattoo artist. So then start to think the range of products that these people buy. Because what I like about this is if you launch a really great tattoo gun, if you find something and you customize it, if you address some of the common faults, what you can do is you can start to build a really cool brand. Um, overall, 4.6 out of 5. So people are very happy with it overall, which means it's probably going to be difficult. Um, I regret buying this. I was excited for a long time, let down, disappointed. Stencil paper was missing, gloves missing. All right, so I mean, again, like I said, it's fundamentals, right? I'm not going to come into this and say, go and launch a tattoo gun. But what you need to do is you need to re you need to recognize the reasons why this as a niche are um, attractive. It's attractive because um, as a niche, you know, the people that are buying tattoo guns are very passionate. They're probably willing to spend a little bit more money if it's something that looks really premium. Um, everything kind of looks the same. It's probably a couple of brands that dominate it. Um, but what you're really going to have to do is you're just going to have to really do your research um, to see you know what brands currently exist and then you're gonna have to like look at you know what people are really sort of looking for understand the avatar or that type of stuff but there you go i mean have a look maybe there's a room for a new um brand targeting people um that like to do tattoos in their kitchen um i'm gonna quickly go through again dog tracker all right let's have a look at this um pets is a good and bad niche it's a good niche because a ton of demand you know it's very se it's not seasonal sorry it's it's um it's evergreen which means it's always going to be around people are always going to have pets okay so this is a dog tracker um what i don't like about this already is it's going to be super functional you're going to be competing against big brands but and it's also very cheap there's very cheap options like this uh so that's uh for the um yeah i just i don't like these type of products that are very heavily dependent on some technology or whatever because you're not going to be as a new seller you're not going to be able to develop anything custom and it's going to be super difficult um splatterball guns i've looked at these before and this is a niche that is interesting because let's have a look at the volume splatterball guns 5200 these are going to go nuts over christmas obviously um which it's not always an amazing thing because it means it's gonna be very difficult. Actually, what's weird about this is it doesn't look like any search history. So maybe this is kind of like a new product, which kind of, I, I, you know, 
uh, I, I don't mind it, but you just got to be wary of, um, of of new new niches because they're going to get very saturated very quickly. What I remember about this niche is the demand is great. It's going to be great over Christmas for sure. Bear that in mind if you're a new seller. Um, but you've got stuff like this doing 43 sales a day, right? This is another great niche if you've got a huge budget. I mean, pretty much every niche is a great niche if you've got a huge budget, but it means it's a bad niche if you don't have a huge budget because if I want to sell one of these and I'm on a limited budget, I'm only going to be able to sell what I can find on Alibaba. But I mean, this, you know, as uh, as a listing, it's not that great, just a bit crap, Photoshop, all that sort of stuff. The problem again with products like this is if you go in here, it's probably going to say it breaks, it jams, it doesn't work properly, and that's great. Well, it's not great, but it's not great for you because how do you actually fix that? If you don't have a load of money to do research and development and come up with something custom, it's going to cost you a fortune. So you're not really going to be able to do that unless you have a massive um, budget. So again, you just got to be, you know, you just got to be sort of wary of that. Beer pong, um, I mean, this is going to be, <clears throat> going to be lots of different products here. What I kind of like about niches like this is, um, you know, you can you can get creative. You can get creative with the branding. You can get creative with your ideas. Um, customizing stuff in this niche is not going to be mega, mega expensive. Like a lot of this stuff, you know, if it's a mat, then you can come up with different design ideas for mats. You can come up with different shaped um, cups, and that's not super expensive, you know. Um, but what the other thing is you're competing against like you know stuff like this and it also depends what people are actually buying are they buying the table are they buying just the cups um so it's a it's actually a little bit too all over the place for me um it's not really so this is like so this is a floating beer pong table um there might be a way with stuff like this again if you see this you know you, you you might think of a way to stand out um listing not too bad i like the fact it's real photos i hate all the photoshop and stuff that's quite cool actually i mean these probably go nuts right in the summer you're probably not really going to sell many of these in the winter but what you got to look at this is like again how can i stand out aesthetically is there something that i can do functionally to improve it so look at the reviews um you know, who are you targeting? You're targeting like, I guess like frat boys, college students, all that type of stuff. But you know, go and dive in, think about those people and think about college students, think about all the other products they might buy. Maybe like you can, if you've seen like Full Send or the Nelk Boys, they've got tons of products aimed at that demographic. So if you if you see, you know, if, if you look at these and you don't think this is a great one, then you can dive in and look at the other products that perhaps they sell. But you can see that these guys are a brand targeting these types of people right these 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 frat people whatever you want to call them um college people i mean they also sell random stuff as well but um, but that gives you ideas for the products that you can then go on and, and explore and then you apply the fundamentals you apply the fundamentals of does it have demand can you stand out how do you differentiate can you actually bring it in and make sense economically and how are you going to get to know that customer as soon as you get to know the customer uh, it makes everything 10 times easier I'm not gonna look at air cream. Silly string is probably branded at this point. Wormhole tattoo kit. So that's a branded one. Remember we looked at this other one before. You'll often find this. So this is people specifically looking. I, I assume a branded one. Yeah, like wormhole. Is wormhole branded? Ah, it's not. So it's not. You know what? I mean, yeah, I kind of like this niche actually. Yeah, I, I do like that niche. I'm not gonna go into it again, but maybe I thought this was maybe a brand wormhole, but maybe not. Maybe it's just like a type of... Um, Maybe it's a type of, of product. All right, so I'm going to look at this one. Glass bowls for smoking marijuana. Like, you know, this sort of stuff, I guess, is like legal now. I'm not sure with the advertising, so you can advertise this type of stuff. But again, what I like about these types of niches is you know the demographic super, super well. You know exactly who's buying this. You know, it's obviously stoners, people that like to smoke weed. And you also know that if they buy one product, they buy other product as products as well. All right, so I want to go back. I don't want to spend too much time looking at these. All right, so next one I'm going to look at is this pool volleyball. Now, obviously, it's probably going to the last one that I look at because I'm closing in on 30 minutes. But obviously, this one is uh, something that's probably going to be really seasonal. Um, but there's probably great demand for it. 
And again, I mean, you can really see how a brand could develop from this, um, a brand for, you know, creating products that people use in the summer, outdoors, um, you know, and there's probably multiple variations of stuff that they, like this that you can launch. Stuff like this might be patented. This is going to be difficult to compete against. This is like super cool, the listing. This looks like absolutely perfect. Great photography. Absolutely love it. But yeah, let's see. I mean, so they're doing 1500 a month. Probably super seasonal, isn't it? I mean, actually, it's not. So even, I guess it, but wow, look at this. It's like even crushing it throughout all the year. But yeah, you would have to, I mean, I love the. I mean, look at that. 116 bucks, and it's one of the one of the top sellers, which is which is great. This is obviously kind of like a cheaper version of it. Doing doing um, 13. This one here, not that many great reviews. I mean, look at this. This listing is rubbish. So this is like a simpler version of that other one. Again, I mean, not that great of a listing. This could be something interesting to look at. You know, you can sort of clearly define kind of the people that are buying it. There's a lot of other products that you can move into, which is nice. But yeah, pool volleyball, who would have thought that's um, an interesting little niche. It's, you know, to toys and games, this sort of stuff is is kind of competitive. But um, again, check there's demand. There's definitely demand. Go in, assess the competition, see if you can stand out. Um, and then that's all you need to do for every single niche that you look at. Those are the steps that you need to take. How can you stand out? How can you create something new? How can you create something sexy that people are attracted to? And then how can that develop into a brand and can it develop into a brand? If you find something that you can come in and you can launch one product and then launch another 10 products, um, that's obviously going to be amazing because then you actually have a brand rather than just selling individual products. All right, so I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it on that one. I've done about half an hour. I don't want to bore you to death with too much of this. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed it. And then check out our other videos on the channel. Like and subscribe if you already haven't. And I will see you in the next one.